Have you ever woken up and found small, red and itchy bumps on your body? Or perhaps caught a strange flat bug crawling up your wall? If so, you may have encountered the subject of today's video. That's right, we are talking about bed bugs. These bugs are nature's vampires, sneaking about your home under the cover of darkness to drink your blood. And they're bugs. In fact, bad bugs belong to the order Hemiptera, also known as true bugs. Bad bugs are actually bugs, unlike other insects like ants, bees, butterflies, and moths. But given that our first long form video was about woodlouse, clearly we aren't too concerned with the technical definition of a bug. Bad bugs are simicids, part of the family Simicidae. There are over 90 species of simids although only three are associated with humans. Many other simicids will also feed on humans, although they prefer bats or birds. For example, the eastern bedbug, Simix adjunctus. This lovely insect lives in caves and feeds on bats when they return to roost each day. In fact, most simicids feed on bats, including the three species that bite as humans. Despite their love for bats, simicids may have evolved a whole 30 million years before their current host, most likely first evolving about 90 million years ago, before the extinction of the non-avian dinosaurs. These simicids probably fed on early birds or perhaps ancient mammals. However, their preferred host remains a mystery. But how do we humans get involved? Well, scientists believe that when early humans slept in cave with bats, some of the bugs just tagged along, being carried in hair and on clothes, following us until we started building permanent homes for both ourselves and our parasites. Before we get to how to kill them, it helps to first know your enemy. Bed bugs are brown oval shaped insects. They range in size between 1.5 mm to 7 mm, depending on their age, sex, and whether the bug in question has fed recently. When they do feed, which takes about 5 to 10 minutes, their bodies fill up with blood like a balloon, which also makes them turn red. When they are not full of blood, bed bugs tend to be small and flat which lets them hide in crevices of your mattress, your furniture, and even your walls. There, the female bedbugs can lay up to 5 eggs daily for their 6-12 to 12 month long adult lifespan. While bedbugs need to feed to produce eggs, they can survive without feeding for more than a year. As previously mentioned, bedbugs will come out at night to feed on you. However, that is not a hard and fast rule. Bad bugs can bite whenever the opportunity presents itself. You might not even know that you've been bitten. Like many biting insects, bad bugs inject an anesthetic when they bite, which means that you might not notice you've been bitten until the itching starts, which can take up to three days. Worse still, some people's bodies don't react to bad bug bites at all, which means they get no indication when they get bitten. The good news is that unless you are allergic, bed bugs mostly don't do much physical harm. The three simicids associated with humans are the common bed bug, Cymex lactularis, the tropical bed bug, Cymex hemipterus, and Leptocymex bueti, much less common species native to Africa. All three are not known to be vectors of any human pathogens, although research has shown that it is a possibility. They are also not harmless though, as the itching from their bites can cause psychological distress, insomnia, and even anxiety and depression. Bed bugs hitch rides on luggages, used furniture, clothes, and anything they can hide in. This means that they spread easily from place to place, like from a hotel to your home. As a result, Simix lactularis can be found on every continent except Antarctica, appearing seemingly everywhere humans like to live. With a bug that hides in the nooks and crannies of your home, multiplies at a great rate, 
and can be found pretty much everywhere you might want to go, logically, you might wonder, how do we kill them? Despite how resilient simicids are, there are many ways to kill them. However, prevention is better than cure, and that holds true for bedbugs as well. To keep bedbugs from investing your home, vigilance is key. Keep watching for signs of bedbug infestations, such as reddish or brownish stains, which could be the remains of crushed bugs or dried blood, bedbugs excrement, which appears as small dark spots that might stain surrounding fabric, bedbug eggs and eggshells, and also nymph sheds, and of course, living bedbugs. Other best practices include checking for bugs or signs of their presence on your secondhand furniture, secondhand clothes, and luggage before bringing them into your home. Checking hotel furniture for bedbugs. Inspect and seal up crevices where bedbugs can hide or enter your home from. Reducing clutter to prevent the bugs from hiding in it. And vacuuming regularly to eliminate bugs that do find their way in. In the event that an infestation does occur, don't panic. We as a species has been living with bedbugs for millennia and have gotten pretty good at killing them. First, isolate the area. Installing door sweeps can prevent bugs from traveling between homes. Second, to keep checking, uh, vacuuming and sealing up crevices and dark places. If you want to keep bedbugs from a specific piece of furniture, move it away from any walls or anything that the bedbugs can use as a bridge. Next, install bedbug interceptors around the lake to stop the bugs from climbing up from here. Since bedbugs can't fly, this will prevent them from reaching and infesting the item in question. The downsides of this is it won't matter too much if the bedbugs are already living there. In a similar vein, encasements for your mattresses and box springs. These can prevent new bed bugs from hiding in them and trap existing bugs inside where they can't reach you. Not any encasement will do. If your encasement lets bed bugs in or out, then it naturally won't be as effective. Ensure that the encasement covers the mattresses or box spring completely. The zipper has small teeth that won't let small bed bugs wiggle out. The encasement has no gaps holes or tears that bed bugs can go through and that the bed bugs can't bite you through the material. The upsides of this are that unless something's gone horribly wrong, encasements have little risk of causing you or your pets any harm. When used with interceptors, you can easily keep bed bugs from biting you in your sleep. The downsides are that bed bugs can live without food for more than a year which becomes a serious problem when you consider the next point. Any hole or tear in the encasement just lets the trap bed bugs out, which means that until you seal the hole, you're right back to where you started. And it doesn't actually kill any bed bugs. Other approaches to eliminating bed bugs include vacuuming thoroughly, although it is important to note that your vacuum cleaner should have a disposable bag. If you do not dispose of the bag, or if you use a bagless vacuum, then you will have just spread the infestation to your vacuum cleaner. To dispose of the bag properly, seal it in an airtight plastic bag and throw it into a bin outside your house. Desiccation is also an option. Diatomaceous earth and silica gel can abrade and strip the oils from insects' exoskeletons causing them to dry out and die. These are applied in powder form onto corners and crevices or around furniture lakes. These powders stick to the bugs, killing them over several hours. However, care must be taken when applying these, because the powder can pose an inhalation risk to people and pets. Desiccants also tend to be less effective when the humidity is high. Because desiccants have a physical mechanism of action, it is much harder for bedbugs to develop a resistance to these. 
unlike chemical pesticides. There are many chemicals available that can kill bedbugs with many different mechanisms of action. The most commonly used today are toxins derived from flowers. These kill insects by causing damage to their nervous systems. In low doses, these toxins are mostly harmless to humans and most pets, although they are toxic to fish. However, many modern bedbugs are resistant to chemical pesticides due to natural selection. These bugs require higher, more toxic doses to kill. Such doses should only be administered by a professional due to how dangerous it can be. Another common method is heat. Like most animals, bedbugs don't handle high heat very well. Use a steam cleaner with a temperature of at least 71 degrees on mattresses, furniture, and other invested areas to eliminate bedbugs. Soak fabrics in hot water or use a washing machine or dryer at a high temperature setting. Both exposure time and temperature matter here, so aim for at least 60 degrees Celsius for an hour to ensure that most if not all of the resilient eggs die. For more serious infestations, exterminators may heat treat an entire room or even building, sealing up the space in question and heating the air inside to at least 50 degrees. This has the same effect, except on a much larger scale. This approach is expensive and time-consuming, but it is the best way to quickly deal with a large number of bedbugs. Bedbugs are a hard-to-kill parasite, adapted specifically to drinking our blood when we are at our most vulnerable. Perhaps we as a species have been too harsh on them. After all, they don't spread diseases or cause serious pain. Here at Bugs Outside My Window, we certainly don't agree. If you enjoyed this video about the worst insect we know, please leave a like or subscribe, maybe. Who knows, you might learn a thing or two from our future videos. Thank you all for watching and don't let the bedbugs bite.